It's 1.30 Friday afternoon and I'm about to start filming the next episode. Good luck with that. Welcome to the next episode. Now, one thing I have been struggling with is the steering. See, I've got the shaft coming down the side. And I've got another little shaft that fits in here that goes up through here and then into the next shaft that goes up to the steering. Now, the problem I have with that is that the chain runs through here where these lines are and, well, takes up the same space. Also, this set of angles that I've got on these uni joints here, well, I think they will cause issues. So, I was work, working away with some straight edges and got the straight edge, sat it on top, out of the way, and then it's like, oh, I've got an inch of clearance over the starter motor. I didn't originally think there would be that much space up there, so that's why I had to lower the engine as much as possible. But now that I've got the bonnet frame built and there's space there, well, I think all I really need to do now is modify the engine mount, lift it up another inch, then I can just run the steering shaft straight through underneath, straight up into the column. It'll just be cutting the bottom here, adding the extra inch into the base of these arms and making a new mount for the front again. Yeah, so I'll lift the engine up that one inch, get the, the shaft going through underneath, and then see how it all sits. I'll just start by putting some packers under there and see what lines up before I go cutting in anything. But yeah, I think that's where it's going to go now. Well, I've put 25mm packers front and rear and the steering column fits underneath it's got millimeters of clearance but it fits oh, wrong one. this one I've still got about eight millimeters of clearance from where the bonnet should be so I reckon that's the way to go it's going to give me the clearance I need does mean I'll have to build and you will modify the engine mounts again. Anyway, I reckon that's what we're going to have to do. So I'll pull the motor out and start working out where I'm putting this pivot point. I've pulled the engine, worked out how high the engine can come. So there is room for this to fit underneath the engine. Now I've worked out that the length of this, it needs to be 45 millimeters longer. And this column needs to be a bit shorter. I'm also going to be using the bit of shaft that we made. So that I can put a bearing block in here to hold the shaft so all the uni joints work. So. Probably just going to take cut that 45 millimeters there Bing. cut this end off flush weld that onto there and then weld that onto the end of that shaft now right, that's what I'm doing I'm actually taking 50 millimeters so I can, can adjust the trim to make sure it's exactly right. Now, when you're joining solid shaft, So when you, when you join shaft, 
you should always grind it out to a bevel around 45 degrees I like to leave a tiny bit in the middle only a couple of millimeters so that way the shaft will be the right length when you weld it together so you attack it on one side then you start the weld from the other and most of that centerpiece will melt in with the weld if you've got it hot enough so that's what I'm going to do now is just grind the V's and then we'll weld it up all right so I've taken taken the paint off further up so that it doesn't burn and interfere with the weld now a very important part with uni joints is you can't have them lined up the same on both ends they have to be out by 90 degrees because uni joints well they work on magic of some sort so they have to be clocked 90 degrees to each other otherwise they don't really work they just bind up and cause you trouble so when you're welding shaft another piece angle trick you can clamp the two pieces in the angle like that and it will keep them perfectly aligned while you tack it all up of course it's got to be clocked clamps tack this up and then have a look at how it fits So I'm pretty happy with where all that fits. So I'm going to pull the shaft out again, weld this joint up, and then get this top piece sorted. So I've got this tacked up. Now, to make sure that's all aligned, sitting it in the in the V will help to align it to start with, but it still can bend. So just having it sitting on two pieces of angle, you can roll it and it'll you'll be able to see if it goes up or down. If it does, then you just need to tap it. So this looks fairly good, so I'm just going to weld it where it is. I'm going to start on the opposing side to where I put the tack weld to start with. And then just basically weld it and rotate it as I go until I've filled the whole lot. It's going to get very hot. And then once you're finished, you roll it over again, make sure it's still straight. If it's not, well, it's still red hot, that's when you can tap it and it'll bend right there and you adjust it to make sure it's straight because once this cools you will have trouble bending it again
Okay, so that all looks pretty good for straightness. So I'm just gonna cool it down with some air now. All right, so I welded it, I checked it was straight, and then cooled it down with the air. Now I cooled it down, because I don't want the heat to travel up and into the bearings, which is also why I had it sitting on the angles when I welded it, so it was arcing out through the shaft here, instead of, if it was sitting on the bench, it would have been arcing through the bearings, sending the electricity through the bearings to the weld which would be a bad thing for the bearings. You should always try to avoid earthing through bolts and bearings because the electrical electricity traveling through them will destroy them and that's not fun so I'll get the linisher, clean that up, make it pretty Once that's cooled properly, I'll put some paint on it. But then again, I've got to put some paint on everything, don't I? Alright, I'll put this in. Alright, I've got the, the bottom shaft cleaned up and welded. I've, I've added my bearing mount to the top shaft and welded him in. So it's all together now. I've beveled a little, I've used the die grinder to put a little groove in the top, in the bottom of this shaft so that the acts kind of like a keyway for the bolt to go through. Now, if I turn it, we have steering. The other thing is, this moves, as you can see. So that's why I've got to put a bearing mount on here. So I'll put a bearing block in here and mount it down to the chassis and then that will hold that so that will always sit in that spot and all the uni joints will work the way they're meant to. So I've got this piece of 42 OD pipe. I'm just going to take a 10mm strip off the end which is the width of the bearing. Then I'm going to weld two nuts on it and then cut it apart so then I can put the bearing in and clamp it into place. And then once that's clamped, I'll have a standoff coming out that'll weld onto the chassis somewhere. That should support the steering. Anyway, cut, 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 cut. So that should jam in there. I probably don't even need to put the actual clamp on there. So. All right, so I put some black paint on here because I don't really want to paint it after I put the bearing on. The bearing is now stuck on there. I've got the outside ring on. That can come off again, hopefully. So I'm just going to assemble it and then weld on a bracket to go onto the chassis. So I've got two millimeters of packers under there, maybe three, so that this will not be sitting on the floor pan. I've got the whole columns all bolted together, so everything moves how it should. 
the next bit. So I've got part of the one of the original engine mounts. I've just got another small piece, welded some brackets on, trimmed it to shape. So now that can fit in under there. So I'll tack that in. That's all tacked in place. Steering works great. So I just need to make the new top plate for this, just to stiffen that up. Once I get the spring in there, and these actually tighten, they're only finger tight at the moment. There'll be a lot less movement. So, I think the next step is basically remount the engine. I really hate doing things twice, but sometimes you have to. Especially when you're making things up as you go along. Alright, engine mounts. So we're going to go with the 25mm extra at the back and at the front we'll just drop that down till it fits. Well I've chopped up the engine mount into lots of little pieces. I've got a couple of 25mm spacers and the original lower mount has been chopped in half because it needs to be. So I'm just going to weld these onto the bottom and then tack them into place and well fit it all together. They're tacked on. So we get these and put them down. That's it for this week. We've got the steering's all done. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. The engine is in the right position, but I'm going to wait until I've fitted a few other components before I finalise the new engine cradle. Uh, we're going to put a top on on the centre console to give it a little bit more strength. I'm going to use so we're going to use this panel to fit up all the electrics. I'll have a little coil mounted on top probably. Um, yeah, there's lots to do, but I just ran out of time. I got a bit eager with the Wednesday video apparently. But, all right. So, from Shade Corgi and me, customize everything.